an oxidation previously, isn't it? So basically, I told you whatever food we eat, whether it be in the form of carbohydrate or protein or fat, you will see it will be converted to end products of digestion that is carbon dioxide and water. So during the mechanism of breakdown of these three things, you will see NAD, FAD will be converted to NADH and FADH, isn't it? So that means oxidation and reduction is going on. Oxidation is addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen or electron is oxidation. Then removal of oxygen or addition of hydrogen or electrons is reduction, isn't it? So oxidation reductions will continuously take place during the process of breakdown of the food what we eat. And during this process, you will see these hydrogen ions will be combining with oxygen molecule to form water. So this process will be occurring in electron transport chain where three ADP molecules will be coupled with three high energy phosphates to form three ATPs. Okay, that is. Now see here, for electron transport chain, I want you to draw this picture of mitochondria. This is outer membrane, inner membrane. These are the coenzymes which are present in order, NAD, FMN, this sequence you should have, okay? And see the oxidation reduction is occurring in this cycle, I said, like we have five enzyme, multi-enzyme complexes. Complex one, two, three, four, five. All these enzymes are concerned with transfer of these hydrogen ions. From the substrate, you see NADH plus H is now transferring these hydrogen ions to FMNH2. From there, it is transferred to FES. So this is uh, catalyzed by enzyme complex 1, NADH coenzyme Q reductase. We have complex enzyme 2, which is succinate coenzyme Q reductase, which is also transferring these hydrogen ions from succinate, FADH2, FES, and finally coenzyme Q. We have some series of steps. So at, in multi-enzyme complex 1, 3, and 4, you can see three arrows are shown. You will see at these three steps, ADP will be coupled with high energy phosphates to form ATP, for which we have this flavoproteins, F0, F1. Three ADPs plus three high energy phosphates will give rise to three ATPs. The same cycle is rewritten like this, in the straight way, okay? It, Enzyme complex 1, you are finding 1 ATP is produced, that is at the level of FMN. And at the enzyme complex uh, 3, you have second ATP produced. And at the enzyme complex 4, we have third ATP generated. So if we do not want ATP production, we can make use of inhibitors also. So inhibitors, we have amytal, rotinone, pyrisidin. Okay. Then we have antimycin, British antilevicide. We have cyanide, carbon monoxide, sodium azide. Okay, these are the inhibitors. Now, chemiosmotic hypothesis in the sense coupling of ADP with high energy phosphate to produce ATP. Okay, that is chemiosmotic hypothesis. See the definition first. Chemiosmotic hypothesis is nothing but it's a mechanism. Basically, this is oxidative phosphorylation. The meaning of oxidative phosphorylation is nothing but you see there is coupling of that means union of ADP with high energy phosphate to form ATP. Okay, it is coupled with electron transport chain. So the formation of ATP is nothing but oxidative phosphorylation. So this for the formation of ATP, many theories have been proposed like for uh, uh, during color vision also, I told you we have many theories, but they are not proved, right? Even this is also, it's only a hypothesis, chemiosmotic hypothesis. This is the structure of mitochondria. So this is the outer membrane. This is the inner membrane. Just now, whatever we have studied, the electron transport chain, enzyme complex 1, 3, 4, and 5, you are finding. This is not V, this is 5. Okay, now at the enzyme complex 1, you will see NAD is converted to NAD, uh, NADH plus H plus is converted to NAD. That means two hydrogen ions of NAD are now seen in the intermembrane space of mitochondria. See in enzyme complex three also two hydrogen ions are mobilized from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space of mitochondria. When enzyme complex four is working, then also you will see 
similar transformation hydrogen ions are now pumped from mitochondrial matrix to intermembrane space so if you do the total 2 plus 2 plus 2 how many six hydrogen ions so this six hydrogen ions will be transported from intermembrane space back to mitochondrial matrix so when these hydrogen ions are transported inside you will see these flavoproteins f0 and f1 will make the three adp molecules and three phosphate molecules to get coupled to form three atps six hydrogen ions are responsible for coupling of adps with high energy phosphates to form atp so this hypothesis is called kemi osmotic hypothesis okay so this is kemi osmotic hypothesis we'll check for some questions from kirti's paper yesterday i hope this is clear niharika yes ma'am first question vitamin d we did right enzyme activity mechanisms also we did glycogen synthesis lipoproteins glycosamine glycans i told you yesterday bmr also we did different transport mechanisms we did in physiology just now right that is active transport and passive transport so uh, at secondary active transport i did in detail we will do remaining transports from physiology only because diagrammatic representation is good there I think we didn't do transcription, isn't it? We did replication. We didn't do transcription. Okay, we will do it as an essay question now. Oh, but it says that paper two. so we will do transcription beta though it is not a part of paper 1 we are doing right because our remaining almost all questions i am finding more or less covered only choose the question from the now because many questions are covered no niharika i am giving you the responsibility to choose two essays from the question bank chapter wise we will have right yes so yes chapter wise you choose two essays and you choose eight shots okay yes. for tomorrow because from yes. papers i am finding yes. almost covered no beta so it's better you go in that way now okay you will be usually asking me when do we stop papers when do we do the subject no so this is the way once we find saturation point if we get we can go in that way okay beta so tomorrow onwards you can just uh, like put yes. the photographs by ticking you need not type don't waste your time unnecessarily put the ticks for tick click the picture and share it in the group okay then we will transcription now so what is transcription so transcription is nothing but formation of rna from dna isn't it that is the meaning of transcription okay it's a process in which rna is synthesized from dna that is basically transcription 
so transcription we see in bacteria it is occurring which is called as prokaryotes you need not study first give the definition you need not study anything from prokaryotes okay then we have to study transcription process in eukaryotes okay so uh, when you do transcription in eukaryotes when you see the genetic material inside the cell inside the nucleus we have chromosomes which are arranged very much tight like they are seen in the form of dark threads so exactly at which point the dna fragment is being selected and which point of the dna is being now read to form mrna so that is actually selected by certain enzymes okay so that is transcription in eukaryotes we have certain enzymes which are called as rna polymerases so suppose if there is one big strand of dna so how does that enzyme recognize which part of the dna is undergoing transcription which is transcribed from five prime direction if you just start counting 35 base pairs away you have a arrangement of like nucleic acids like this t t g a c a so we have this box like we have a tata box and we have hognes box okay so this box which is showing you the sequence of t t g a c a it is called as hognes box and if you start counting from three prime direction it is also like like 35 bases away from five prime direction you call this as tata box or primbo box so this primbo box and hognes box are the two sequences of these nucleic acids which will allow these rna polymerases to go and bind to that particular area and that particular area will start transcribing so transcription in eukaryotes is actually a complicated process okay so here we have different polymerases like rna polymerase 1 2 and 3 when you talk about rna polymerase 1 it helps in the synthesis of ribosomal rna polymerase 2 it helps in the synthesis of messenger rna mrna and 3 helps in the synthesis of transfer rna so that's what promoter sites i told you know in case of eukaryotes okay you in case of eukaryotes we have this cat box and hognes box beta so better you use this for eukaryotes cat box is in the sequence is gg cc aatc this is called as cat box which is 70 base pair away from 5 five, 5 prime end hognes box is ataata this is hognes box or tata box which is around 25 base pair away from this 5 prime direction so that is these are the specific areas where these rna polymerases will come and bind so once you are supposed to draw this and read the theory part from this hognes box tata box okay cat box so initiation of transcription so that means molecular c chromatin containing the promoter sequence what i told you hognes box and tata box they are actually responsible for this uh, uh, like rna polymerases to come and bind okay so binding of transcription factors to dna sequences in promoter region stimulation of transcription by certain enhancers enhancers will increase the visibility of tata box and hognes box so the transcription factors are also there we have six transcription factors okay which are transcription factors like uh, you are finding this i i d a b f e and h okay these are the transcription factors and enhancers they all will increase the visibility of this sequences so that those rna polymerases will go and bind so once you see the rna polymerases start working whatever uh, rna is formed it is in crude form it is called as heterogeneous rna you call it as pre rna it has many things which are not needed in the structure hence it is refined and once it is refined you will see a refined form of dna rna will be formed so there are certain modifications like at three prime direction you will see like cap is modified at five prime direction you will see poly a tail is removed okay now see here what is this five capping that means five end of mrna is capped with this group seven methyl guanosine by 
like triphosphate linkage. Here, as I said, you know, SAM is working to give this methyl group. This gap is required for translation. Okay, that means this is one modification where you see at the head end, we are finding seven methyl guanosine is coming. Then polyatyl, large number of eukaryotic mRNAs produce, possess adenine nucleotide chain at three end. That is tail end. The polyatyl, generally this tail will be present as long as mRNA is present in the nucleus. Once it is moving into the cytoplasm, this tail also will disappear. Now, there is one thing which is called as introns and their removal. Now, when you see this is, suppose this is heterogeneous RNA, where you have some unwanted things to get rid of, you are finding introns is an area which is not reading for any of the amino acids. Hence, introns are removed. Exon and exon are coming and binding together and introns are removed. So, introns are removed by chemical substances called, called as NERPs. S N R N P S. They are called as NERPs. Okay. They are removing the introns. Once the intron is removed, the exons are coming and binding together with the enzyme like ligase. Okay. So that is one change you see introns, introns and their removal. Okay. So the heterogeneous RNA which is coming, it is also cut into pieces and new chemical substances, chemical groups are added to make it very much stabilized. Okay, so we have splicing, okay? And then we have new chemical groups like hydrogen bonds, sulfur bonds, so many bonds are added to make the structure of this uh, like mRNA more stable, okay? So now if you just look at this structure, basically this is the structure of chromosome here we have centromere, we have P arm, Q arm. So in the P arm, suppose this is the area where we had Tata box, Hognes box. So that is being identified. This is one particular gene. Okay, so now once mRNA is formed, I told you we have exons and introns, no? So you will see what is being removed. We are finding exons are being added and introns are being removed, okay? So you are finding introns are actually uh, like uh, white parts and exons are the areas which are shown in pink. So all pink areas are all binded together and this white areas we are getting rid of. Okay, eight exons and seven introns. Okay, so seven introns will be removed and eight exons, uh, they will be binding to form this mRNA. Okay, so like that it is actually discussed transcription. So once transcription is discussed, then you have certain drugs which will stop the production of mRNA, tRNA, rRNA. When you don't want the production of these mRNA, tRNA, rRNA, you use these drugs. Like we had inhibitors for electron transport chain also. Similarly, we have inhibitors for transcription. So we have actinomycin D, rifampicin, alpha amanitin. Okay, these are the drugs which we can use to stop the transcription. Okay, so you just, we will stop here beta and tomorrow you just choose the uh, questions as we do for all patterns like this only. Two essays, five shorts and five very shorts you choose for tomorrow beta. You can just share it in the group. If possible, you share for all the three subjects if you find the questions repeated. Okay beta, so we'll stop here. Okay, thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.